Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woken, and I'm back from another fake Grand Order video! Because now the NA Styad is doing stuff again! Yay! We're gonna be having the thing that everyone was expecting. Okay, I guess maybe some people weren't expecting it because it's October, but it's the time for the Christmas event revival, which is another little auto thing. So I'm gonna talk about that. Talk about the units within and also the, band, the new banner that came out for NA that was not on JP, but apparently it was on the Korean side. So that's gonna be today's video. Let's get into it. Okay, so... Uh, this is, I believe, just the pre-release. I think the actual event comes out on 928. Yeah. I guess this is just a campaign to begin with. I forget that they do this from time to time. But on this summoning campaign here, they've got a banner, which is St. Quartz Summon for a limited time revival Christmas 2021 pre-release pickup summon daily, which features Orion, Jean D'Arc Jolter, Atlanta Alter, and Robin Hood. And the way it breaks down, which is the way I don't like it, two five stars at the beginning, and then the next day it is Orion, and then the next day uh, it is Jolter, and then they rotate, rotate, rotate out until the end of time. Uh, so let's talk about these units. I think there's not much to say about them other than they're old and the people who really like Jolter will not care about the current state of Jolter and will summon regardless, but let's go with Jolter. She's the one that uh, is the breakout of Fate Grand Order. At least I think I would consider that. Anyway, active skills. For, a, for the longest time, it might be surprising to hear, Jolter was the best unit in the game. She's not anymore. <laughs> For various reasons, but let's go into it. Active skill, self-modification EX, increases on a critical damage for three turns, increases on crit star absorption for three turns, crit damage up is 50%, absorption is 800%. Second skill, Dragon Witch EX, increases party attack for three turns, further increases the attack of dragon allies for three turns, 20%, 20%, and you can tell how old she is because of how easy it is to read these skills. Third skill, Ephemeral Dream A increases on Buster performance for one turn, grants self invincibility for one turn, deals 100 percent, uh, deals a thousand damage without killing uh, to self demerit. Her passive skills are Avenger B, Oblivion Correction A, and Self Replenishment Magic A plus, which is a increased um, own NP generation rate by 18 percent, but a 500 percent chance to reduce the party's debuff resistance, increase the own crit damage by 10 percent, and charges the NP gauge by 4 percent every turn. Her pen skill for the third one is a bonus against Avengers. Her noble phantasm is called Le Grand, Le Grand Man de la Hain, the rural rage of mine. We'll go with the uh, powered up version. I don't know if we have the strengthening in NA, in NA yet, but I'll talk about it regardless. Deals damage to one enemy, inflicts buff block status for them for one time, gains 30 crit stars, and it is. 800% damage at level 1 and 1200% at level 5. Inflicts curse for 5 turns. Not not the greatest to be 100% real with you. The curse damage is 500 at overcharge 1 and it can get up to 2500 by the end of it. She also does have a Witch Dragon of Shinjuku 1999 costume, so that's cool. So yeah, like I said, Jolter back in the day was one of the best Buster servants and she was definitely laid waste to everything during the buster meme meta not buster memes but but they're during the buster meta that existed up until i want to say uh scotty came out i think that's safe to say and then buster started falling off and then obviously buster is alive and kicking it in jp but she is not one of the units in there. The reason being, of course, is that her skills are just too old at this point. 50% buster damage is good, and granting self invincibility for one turn is good. Having them on the same ability, not good. Not good at all. The deal damage is negligible, but yeah, this is not great. Second skill, it's, uh, again, not the greatest. It feels like so many other people give way more when it's a specific, especially when it comes to dragon allies, but not the greatest the crit damage up is nice and the absorption is whatever but to just do the, those two things just not the greatest so she's a, definitely a unit in need a, of a buff of some kind and i think people have been asking for it for a while that being said she probably still would be very useful to you especially if you are a fan of jolter she's not, not bad by any stretch of the imagination she's just old and she's an old unit that is still technically good she's still better than a lot of units 
uh, that even have certain buffs, I would say. I would go as far as to say. It's kind of like Merlin, where when you look at Merlin, Merlin is a fantastic unit, but when you compare him to the ones that came out nowadays, he doesn't really live up to them. But there's no denying that what he does is good. It's just not good in the current meta game of stuff, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But that being said, if you're a fan of her, you can obviously use her. She's for pretty fantastic still, I would say. Uh, still very much usable. There's plenty of <laughs> there's plenty of units that people use that are bad, and they figure out a way to beat stuff. You're not gonna have that much trouble with Jolder. Very simple, Buster, go boom, done. I guess the other thing that's kind of a knock on her is that she does not have a MP gauge buster of any kind, like an MP gauge of any kind. So when you use her with Vich to increase her skill levels, all you're really getting is a chance to get back her buster performance for one turn. And even then, it's on a six turn cooldown, so not the greatest. This being on a five turn means that you would be able to get it back. You'd be able to get this back, but yeah. That's Jolter. If you are a fan of Jolter, you've already made up your mind and you are already summoning and I wish you the best of luck. I hope you are able to get her. But next, let's talk about someone who is equally on that Orion. Not to be confused with Super Orion, which is the actually very good busted version of Orion. This is the technically a male, but it's Artemis taking over version. But anyway, active skill. Uh, increase on defense for one turn, uh, affection of the goddess EX, inc uh, increase on defense for one turn, increase on attack by 20% for three turns, increase on debuff resistance by 50% for three turns. Weird, <laughs> weird that it's only by 50%, but it's a nice to have 50% defense up for one turn, which is not the greatest, but it's one turn, five turn cooldown. Increase damage against male enemies for one turn, 100%. Uh, again, not the greatest, but it is a one turn 100% up on male dudes, so if you're an anti-dude, if you're looking for someone who is a saber and dude, Orion is your dude for taking them down. I of the Mind Falls B, grant self-evasion for one turn, increase on crit damage for three turns, 34%, it's a really weird percentage. Passive skill, magic resistance D, independent action A+. Third skill is a increased damage against archers. And their buff, which they get from their interlude 2, Tristar, Morta, Mio, Moon Goddesses, Arrows of Love and Romance, deals damage to one enemy, reduces their attack by 20% for 3 turns, reduces their MP gauge by 1, MP level 1 is 1200% damage, by the end it's 18,000 damage, um, it reduces their critical attack chance for 3 turns, at charge 100%, it's 20%, if you get it all the way to 500% charge somehow, it's 60%. So, similar to Jolter, <laughs> this unit just doesn't have a buff. But funny enough, I would consider this unit actually good in being what they are, which is being a specific unit that you want to use against a boss that is male and saber, because their entire kit is kind of built around beating them. They have an arts NP with 5 hits, which is pretty decent. They have 2 arts, so it's in theory possible for you to kind of potentially loop this under the right conditions and you'll be able to reduce their MP gauge which will buy you some time and also reduce their attack which is nice to have for sure. It just doesn't really compare to the power of Super Ryan who Super Ryan doesn't really deal in the idea of like keeping them alive. Super Ryan just kills them very quickly and very effectively and without NP damage he just does it with his bare fists so maybe not the best comparison but this is a unit that I think is actually kind of a little, mm, I don't know if underrated is the right word for it, but I definitely feel like a lot of people consider Orion bad, but I wouldn't really consider them bad. I think they're just very niche, and in that niche they're very good, like against male type units and stuff like that. Not the most uh, uses for them though, I'll give them that, but I still think, I think they're cool. The one thing I'll say is that they are not limited, they're always in banners, so there's, unless you're a huge fan of Orion slash Artemis over here, and you just want to reunite them with their Super Orion, which is what I kind of want to do. To be honest, I'm actually kind of salty that I've never been able to pull Orion, because I'm one of the only people in the world that actually wants to pull Orion. Um, I would have loved it if instead of getting Anastasia on that last summon video I did, it was Orion, because at least I don't have Orion, and I would be able to reunite them and stuff like that. But anyway... This unit is here for you to summon on if you want them to. I would say that they are solid in some places, but obviously their status as someone who is always in the banner will always make me say that you probably should not summon unless you are someone who's just so damn bad for this unit that you need them right now. So, that's my advice on that. 
In terms of the four and the three, Atlanta Alter is cool. Nothing much more to say there, and Robin Hood is neat. So, Robin Hood is Robin Hood. You don't really need me to say much about Robin Hood. Now let's look at the actual events. Okay. Here it is. Uh, hmm. Event duration, October 23rd. It hasn't even been announced, really. I have to look at this and see. When the hell is this event actually starting? to October 11th. When does the... When does the actual unit start? When, am I crazy? When the fuck is this event actually starting? <laughs> One moment, I'm gonna pause. Okay. So, there really isn't anything, so I'll be looking at the Japanese side. I don't know when the event is actually gonna start for us, but we can assume a couple days or on the day. It's really weird. Uh, let's go into it, though. This one should be pretty easy. Um, in terms of the free unit, this is um, one of the only two other free units we're getting for this year. So you should make sure to get her, which is Nightingale Santa. She's very solid, just to very quickly kind of just go over what she does. As you can see here, she has an ability that kind of like can heal the party in her first skill. Her second skill can grant an ally gut status, but also can like increase their MP damage for a little bit, which is by 30% for three turns, which is pretty solid. And then she can also increase party attack for three turns, increase their crit damage as well. She is a quick servant with a single target attack, as you can see here. Deals damage. No, she's an AoE. She deals damage to all enemies, removes their offensive buffs, 500% chance to remove their ailment debuffs as well. Um, which is funny to think about. She heals. She both heals them from everything that they have. And because you are getting her MP5 in this event, she has a thousand damage, reduces her defense for three turns. Three turns. Really solid unit for who um, AoE quick to have, so definitely worth having. Um, especially in this event, we don't get we don't get like a crazy amount of welfare. So if you're someone who just really badly needs an AoE uh, archer, she will do you just perfectly fine. I think she does perfectly fine in a bunch of different compartments where she has like a little bit of healing for any potential use in a challenge quest if you want to kind of use her, or a boss fight really, if you want to use her that way. You can use her for um, um, grinding, if you just use a little, be a little bit smarter in your team compositions and stuff like that. Move stuff around, maybe add a, a waiver. I can't remember if she needs a specific, what specific, what specific thing she needs to be able to loop, but you should be able to loop with her, especially with how much damage she does on her MP and how much hits it does. It should be possible. And yeah, overall a very solid unit that you should be getting, especially because she's free. So come on, it's free and it's actually usable, you should get them. <laughs> There's nothing more I can say on that one. Uh, the units themselves on the summoning campaign. We have, oh god, we have Astolfo, Bradamante, Nightingale, Avazvaz uh, Nursery, Rhyme, and Astolfo, and then also some, for some reason, Caesar and uh, Darius Age 3. So, uh, very quickly to go through these, Nursery Rhyme, I feel like she's very weirdly built, but she will do in a pinch. She's not the greatest unit, she's not the worst unit, I think she can be useful in the right context. I've been able to use her in a bunch of nice contexts while I was waiting for an actual AoE um, caster unit, and yeah, I think she's actually kind of interesting to be built, but she's a really weird unit regardless. Probably needs a buff of some kind. Estelfo, everyone knows this dude. He's a writer. He's an AOE. Very uh, effective, I want to say, at being able to grind just a little bit. So, yep. People who love Estelfo will don't need me to tell them why Estelfo is good. Because it doesn't matter. If you like Estelfo, then you're going to get Estelfo with one of those units where it doesn't really matter what I have to say about Estelfo. As Vata Hatum, uh, Angry Man. He's uh, story locked, so this is your best chance of getting him. So if you really want to get him, I would suggest maybe waiting and for a time where he's on raid up. I don't know. Yeah, he has pre bro. He will have a solo raid up day and get him that way. Stealfo is always in the banner, so you always have a chance to get him. So that would be my specific advice with him. I think it actually is worth having story locked four stars. I think. Yeah. Yes. There you go. That's what I'll say about that. Nightingale is a very interesting kind of buff unit. Um, she's obviously most focused on healing, uh, preventing instant kill debuffs, um, 
increasing damage against humans for some reason on the second skill. She does it twice, increase own damage and increase defense 50% and 25% for three turns. And her third skill is a very funny, like, it's a just target one ally, give them for three turns 50% buster up, which is funny. Um, and her uh, Noble Phantasm, of course, heals, but also reduces all enemies attack by 50% for a single turn. Removes the party's debuff and recovers party's HP. Obviously, the biggest fault that she has is that she's a berserker that does not have guts, so that means she dies very easily. She's also your healer. The last thing you want is for your healer to be super squishy and die. <laughs> I think what they need to do is I need to give a second skill an update and that will give her guts. I assume they'll do it at some point. Um, either do that to the second skill or maybe the third skill. This third skill I think is very interesting that they gave her a 50% buster performance up to give to any ally. Uh, I do end up using her funny enough as someone who does not have a Merlin who just kind of uses her for buster performance up. I've been using her in the past for that. So I think she's a very niche unit with certain niche effects. Like obviously I think she would probably be best in a challenge quest of some kind, especially one like the one we're getting back with King Asan. This ability to grant them instant kill immunity for one time, three turns, is pretty useful. Even though it only lasts for three turns, I wish it was just a permanent grants them instant death immunity, because it's not like you're going to be running into that all that often, but whatever. Um, so yeah, the biggest fault to her is that she has no guts and she's a berserker, and in Fago, a lot of the harder quests in the game will just eat up a berserker with one crit, so it's kind of important for them to have a, um, a guts in some capacity, especially since you would mostly be using her for um, challenge quests, because obviously in grinding kind of stuff, you wouldn't really be using her. You'd probably want to use someone else, because not a lot of people grind with Unless you're someone like me and you're making some kind of like meme uh, team format, in which case then yes, she can be used in that, but other than that, no, not really. It's going to kind of depend on the player where you can kind of use her in whatever way you want. So yeah, that's how I feel about her. Next we got Bradamante, who I absolutely love, the ass of France. Perfectly acceptable unit, probably needs a buff of some kind though. She increases her own quick and arts performance by 30%. She has a second skill that grants uh, a gut status for one time and also increases her defense. And then she also can charge one ally's MP gauge while removing their debuffs and is a 20%. Uh, her third skill is a bonus damage against riders uh, because she is related to Ostolfo because she's one of the knights of France. And her noble phantasm deals damage to all enemies, 60% chance to stun them for one turn, reduces their crit attack chance by 20% for three turns, increases own NP damage for one time, it activates first, 600% damage at level 1 and 1000 at level 5, 5 hits, quick, AoE, and then she also shows you her butt while she's doing it, which is maybe the thing she's most known for in all of Fago. It even made it into the carnival, the Fago carnival thing. Everyone knows that's basically what Bradamante is, and for that very reason, uh, she's obviously, I think she's actually the weakest of the Lancer Quicks in terms of AoE. I think Parvati is still number one, with the Valkyries being second, and I don't know if any other units on JP who are Lancer specifically kind of have been released since then. I'd have to look at the list to be 100% aware of what they are. But in terms of what we have currently in NA, she's probably the third? Maybe the third? Let me take a quick look. She might be the third best. <laughs> below, below two four stars. The reason is is that she just doesn't deal enough damage, and she doesn't have enough NP gain to warrant what she does, so it ends up kind of screwing her over a little bit because of that. And this is from me, someone who actually summoned for her and has been crazy using her and testing her and stuff like that. She just doesn't have the specifics of what she needs to kind of be up there as close to everyone else. Okay, looking at this, it doesn't really look like there is. Eh, actually, a little bit later in the future, but in order to keep it hidden, I'll keep that hidden for now. So yeah, I think Bradamante is a unit that is probably not... She needs a buff of some kind. She definitely needs a buff. Definitely usable. I've used her plenty of times, and sometimes maybe you're just someone who just is a simple person, and you just want, after your two hour long lotto grind, maybe you just want to see a butt every once in a while. And in which case I say Bradamante is your girl and I wish you the best of luck in summoning for her. She's not story locked, she's not limited, you can just literally pull her at any random time. Um, which is what I've been hoping to happen so I can get her a little bit more damage so I can warrant using her over my NP5 body. <laughs> 
because honestly, if I need a, a a Lancer for anything AoE related, I just go to Bravati if I'm using Quick. So yeah, that's what I currently feel about Bradamante. I really hope that she one day gets a buff of some kind to make her a little bit better at looping, or maybe give her some added utility. But for now, she's third best <laughs> in a category, and she's outclassed by two four stars. <laughs> Good butt though, very nice butt. I absolutely love her. Fantastic character. Please bring back Samba Christmas. Anyway, Astolfo, the Knight of Evaporation Sanity, everyone's favorite dude who looks like a lady. First skill, this eventually gets buffed, but it's not buffed on NA, I don't think so. Not yet, uh, but we'll look at the buffed version. Charges on NP gauge, charges on NP gauge for uh, for, uh, for every turn, for three turns, increase own debuff, uh, removes own debuffs. Grain crit stars, NP up is 20%, NP regen is 20%, stars is 20, which is really nice. Second skill, the Black Luna, magic flute that calls Panic C, inflicts terror when activated 500% chance to stun them. Grant self evasion for three attacks, three turns. This is great. This is a great skill. Even if uh, <laughs> the terror is whatever, usually, I think. But this, because it's so hit or miss if it actually activates, but this is very nice. Granting self evasion for three attacks, three turns. Very good. Uh, Majestic Triumphal Return. The only thing that would be better is that if there was no three turns. There was no, like, Grand Self Evasion for three attacks and statement. That would have been the key. That would have been the best version of it. Majestic Triumphal Return EX. Increase on attacks for three turns. Increase on crit damage for three turns. Increase on crit star absorption rate of buster cards for three turns. 20% attack, crit damage is 30%, and 500% buster absorption. I want to make it clear, this man has one fucking buster card. <laughs> he only has one. Why are you buffing one card? <laughs> Magic resistance A, increase on debuff resistance by 20%, riding A, increase on quick performance for 10%, third skill, anti-rider, because of course he goes against himself. He is a single target. Quick Saber seals their MP for one turn, deals 1200% damage, and for 2000 if you get him to MT5. Increase on quick performance for three turns, 100% is 20%. And yeah, if you get it all the way to 500% somehow, it's 40% quick up for three turns, which is pretty nice if you can get that. Um, Astolfo needs more buffs. This, no, this buff is nice enough. Um, it is very nice. We're not probably not gonna have it for a while, I don't think. Um, I don't think we have his Leonard Lude yet. This skill is very nice. This third skill might actually be the one where I'm like, this just, I don't understand what the hell they were doing. I don't know why you need so much buffs or absorption for the, his one buster card. It just doesn't seem to make much sense to me. Especially since you're only be giving that one card. <laughs> yeah, there's really no sense as to why they did this. The more I read this, the more I'm like, why isn't it just crit star absorption in general? Increase own crit, yeah, increase his own buster. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I guess that fits with his uh, title of the Knight of Evaporating Sanity, because he's evaporating mine, that's for sure. I think he would be potentially very solid in a challenge quest scenario, but the way his third skill is built just makes it so that he kind of probably has a wet fart of a final thing here. If this was just in general crit star absorption, I think it'd be better, but even then I still say maybe buff this skill just a little bit more. Something, he needs something added here. This ability being buffed is pretty nice. Being able to have your own like crit bomb at 20 is very good. MP regening is very good. And also having just 20% NP, that's pretty nice. So I think what he really needs is just like, yeah, he just needs something to that third skill to make him better. I think he should be solid in terms of damage. Having nine hits on quick is very nice. That means he should be getting crazy crit stars. But the problem is, is actually it just now, now, now that I think about it even more, this skill makes less and less sense as time goes on. He's quick. In theory, you would do a quick chain with three quicks. You'll have more than 50 crit stars. Assuming you have his cards, you should have 50 quick. So, yeah. I'm not saying he's bad. What I'm saying is, is I expect better. But anyway, that's how I currently feel. If you feel anything different, feel free to tell me. I was not able to get a Stolfo, so I'm not actually able to have too much. I can only base off of what I read here and what I see. So if he has some kind of crazy hidden power that I don't know of, feel free to tell me. But other than that, if you're pulling for this Ostolfo, it's because it's Ostolfo. So good luck to you guys if you end up doing that. I know. I know. Sometimes you just need a dude. It's okay. It's alright. I won't judge you. 
And in terms of these raid ups, you'll always have them. Darius H3 and Caesar. So, in terms of the event, I think there's the Traces of Christmas, quick performance up by 8%, NP uh, acquisitions raid up by uh, 8%, and then starting battle is 30% NP, and then it turns into 50% when it's level. Uh, five, I believe. Yes, it is. Not bad, not bad. It's a pretty nice quick performance in MP acquisition rate. What is MP acquisition rate? Is that just MP gain? That's a weird way of saying it. Yes, it is generation rate. That's a weird way of saying it, but whatever. We also have event command codes, which heals the user by a hundred, uh, not a hundred, a thousand HP when attacking with the engraved card. Um, we have the inexistence phantasmal horse, which is a mouthful to say. When engraved on a quick command card, increase the, uh, this card's crit damage by 20%. So you'll notice how this says quick and not buster. Astolfo, get your shit together. Angel's Bed removes one critical chance up for the attack target, then heal the user by 100 HP. Alright. Solid, you should always get these. Uh, in terms of the event bonus, it's 100% damage up for Astolfo and the two nurses and 50% bond up. And then it's just kind of the basics of everything else here. 5% to all allies if you have MASH in the background. Um, this is kind of like a lotto grind, as I said before, but it's a limited lotto grind. You won't be able to crazy grind it. You could, you'll, you'll be stopped at a certain point. I want to say it's limited to 10 boxes. Yeah, it is right here. Um, worth getting the box. It has Dragon Fangs. It has uh, Forbidden Pages. It has a tuplet Twin Crystals. It's got Ghost Lanterns. Pretty nice. It also has Apples, which is cool. The thing that kind of sucks is the fact that it has regular 4 XP, but to be fair, by this time in, in Japan, that's what they had, so that's what they give us. It should be updated, but it doesn't. But then you can also exchange, use exchange tickets for feathers and the giant's ring and the talent of chaos and stuff like that. You also get a status up card. You also get these little lanterns, which is what you will use to power up your nurse. And a crystallized lore, when it's the grand, which is the grand prize, so... Not too bad. Pretty easy event. You just kind of play. You just kind of enjoy the story. You play. You grind a lotto. Bing, bang, boom. You're done. There's also the Santa Battle Royale, which activates when you reach a total number of resets, I think, across the server. So these will unlock. You'll get various gifts if you can beat them, such as a gen five Genesis eggs, five uh, reactor cores, five uh, Primordial Lungua, Five giant rings, five town Dakota Magatamas, five bullets. I guess they're called gunpowder, and five stakes. So, yeah, pretty simple, pretty simple. And you only need to clear Fuyuki to do this. So, that's absolutely everything. I cr tried to cram as much as I could in such a short, limited time. <laughs> Not even short, limited time, just to get everything out. So it's all in one video. So if you made it this far, God, dude, thanks. It's a long video. You should leave a like. It does help the channel a whole bunch. And you can leave a comment down below if you agree or disagree with any of the servant thing. Like I said, I'm usually pretty lax when it comes to what a servant does. If they are actually god awful in some way, I will call it out um, most of the time. Or if they are notorious for being like bad at the time being. But to be honest, a lot of the stuff in Fago, you should be able to figure it out, like MacGyver style, how to win if you want. Where there's a will, there's a way. So for the most part, you should summon for these characters if you absolutely love them in some capacity. So if you do end up summoning for them, I wish you guys the best of luck. I know Jalter threw off a lot of people, so saw it rip to your supply. I wish you guys the best, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Until next time, bye-bye.